I'm in Shenandoah National Park at the bottom of the mountain and uh, this is US 211 heading up towards uh, Thornton Gap. That's heading up towards Thornton Gap. There's my little red car and heading down that way is uh, back towards Sperryville. Buck Hollow Trailhead is right here to the right which is why there's so many cars parked here. And I've, uh, I've hiked that before and I have uh, videos on it on my channel if you're interested in seeing them. But I'm going to do some bushwhacking today. I'm going to go down here to the low point in this road and look and then bu uh, start bushwhacking up the side of the mountain to the left. I don't know the name of the hollow. I don't know if it even has a name, but the old maps show that there was a bunch of uh, homesteads up that way uh, near, near the stream. So I'm going to go down there and see if I can find that stream and, and start hiking up it and look for some old homesteads. The elevation here is 1080. quarter of a mile into my hike. Here's the stream. It goes under the road right here. Feeds into the uh, Thornton River. Up that way is where the cars are parked. This is uh, overgrown pretty bad right in through here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go wide and see if I can find a way to start pushing my way up into here. Well, I'm up in here. I had to go pretty far east of where I couldn't go in where I, where I should have, so I came further down towards Sperryville and pushed up. There's 211 there. So now I'm going to head up this way. This hollow here is where I'm where I'm going up. So I'm going to start ang see if I can angle my way back over there. See, it's kind of interesting over here it's fairly clear. See that? But over here where the church was, it's all it's all briars and nastiness. So I don't know. I'm gonna see what I can what I can find and what I can get to. Four-tenths of a mile into my hike, I'm at 1,100 feet. <coughs> uh, <coughs> down there is still US 211. I found the old road. This is it right here. And the old church is over here to the left just a little ways, which would be on the east side of the road. There's not, I don't see anything there anymore, and it's, it's super, super overgrown with briars and stuff. Here's the road, and then just slightly west of the road, here's the, here's the creek. Uh, so anyway, it's a fairly narrow canyon, so I'm going to try to follow the road, but if I can't, I'm, I may have to swing wide again. When you see my GPS track, you'll see I had to go way wide around the church location just to, just to get up in here. Over there to the east, it's fairly clear, but up through here where people used to roam, it's it's pretty overgrown. Six tenths of a mile into my hike, I'm up to 1180 feet, and I'm going to mark this waypoint uh, Fry Road number two. There's a split in the road here. That's where I came from down there, and the creek's over here to the right. And when you get to this point here, my my waypoint road number two, it splits. Here's the left branch. 
and here's the right branch. Now looking at the old maps, it looks like where I want to head is to the right up here and get up on this little ridge. And then this, this road hopefully follows this ridge on up the mountain a little bit more. Eventually, and there should be two homesteads up here. I'm calling them Atkins number two and Atkins number three. So we'll, we'll find out about that when we get up here. So I'm going to turn to the right here and we'll see what happens. Point six miles into my hike, I'm up to 1,215 feet. And uh, I'm going to mark this uh, for now for rock, rock pile number one. Obviously, uh, somebody was doing something here. This isn't high enough up to be where I was looking for homesteads, but this is where somebody lived. There's also a couple of smaller piles of rocks over there. This is where I came from up this way, and it brings you up to this kind of flat zone in between the two creeks. And that's a pretty good pile of rocks right there. So I marked it with a GPS marker, rock pile number one. Okay, well over there's the, uh, the big rock pile that I just showed you. And right down there are two smaller rock piles. And then, Here's, this must have been some by the edge of the property or something. And then right over here, it looks like if I go right here, I'm rejoining the road that I left earlier. See that heading on up? So here we go. I get, it looks like my right-hand turn was actually a driveway. They came up here to this big pile of rocks. And pretty nice flat zone up here. And now I'm going to go back over here and uh, rejoin the, the road. Eight-tenths of a mile, still hiking upstream. I'm up to uh, 1,200 feet, or uh, 1,260 feet. And uh, I'm going to call this uh, area rock pile number two. Here's a pile of the uh, road and the streamer right down there. <clears throat> the, uh, the other side of the the other side of the hollow you can see over there. Anyway, here's a rock pile here. There's a rock pile up there behind his trees. That's another rock pile. Up there is another rock pile. There's another rock pile. And here's another rock pile here. And uh, if, you, if you imagine this area all cleared out, no briars or anything, it'd be a pretty nice area, see? That's looking down towards US 211. It'd be a pretty nice view from here. You got your stream over there. You got a road coming up. You got your stream over there. You got water most of the time so uh, I'm getting tired of trying to follow the road exactly so I may start swinging wide on some of this because it's just really nasty trying to hike up that that old road so I might start looking for an easier way and coming back I think I'm gonna cross over <clears throat> to the uh, over there to the what would be the I guess the west side because I don't see a whole lot of uh, briars and stuff over there. So I may just follow that, even though it's pretty steep, I may follow that on down to US 211. It's hard to get lost in, in this area because if you just follow downstream, you're going to end up on US 211. Anyway, I'm going to continue to climb the mountain.
nine tenths of a mile into my hike. I'm up to 1,330 feet. And uh, this is my Atkins number three waypoint from the old map. The old map was off by about 250 feet, so I re I'm repositioning it. But this is obviously it. There's a big pile of rocks. Looks like some kind of metal axle up there. I'll get a picture of that. And then this is dug out in here. Looks like a back wall back there. Here's the other side. And then as soon as you get past this Atkins Waypoint 3, the road's supposed to make a hard left. Well, it looks like it does right here. And then I'm going to head on up to where uh, my ultimate destination is up that way, the, f the Fry uh, homestead, if I can find it. And then the old map also showed another homestead over here to the right. Well, there's a great big rock wall uh, reinforcing something. So I'll go over here and take a look too. But this is definitely it. So I repositioned my Atkins Waypoint 3 and uh, 4 I didn't even bother to put in here, but it'll be just on the other side of this. There's a there's a there's a rock wall, or that could have been actually side of the house. And uh, look what we got here: daffodils coming up. There's some right there. Here's some over here. See them? Daffodils. Now I got to see if I can find the uh, where the road heads off to the left, up towards the Fry property. Okay, well there's the road, there's, there's the uh, Atkins 3 waypoint. Here's the opposite side of the road, this rock wall here, nicely done, dry stacked. And then it looks like there's a, <clears throat> looks like there's a driveway heading down this way, which is where the other homestead would be, but it's gnarly looking down there, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother to go down there. But uh, right here where their driveway came into the road, pretty, pretty nicely done, dry stack stone. See that? One point two miles into my hike, I'm up to fourteen hundred and ten feet. I'm about three hundred feet from the uh, the old map location for the Atkins homestead. I call that Atkins One. Down there's where I came from, and uh, this looks like it was probably a driveway that came up this way. And then it makes a right hand turn. Behind this big tree is a stack stone wall. See that? And then it looks like the driveway goes around to the right and heads up this way. So I'm going to follow it up this way a little bit. I also saw a picture in the Shenandoah website records of a, the grave of a James R. Fry who died in 1924. I'll look around a little bit and see if I can find it. 
but it's maybe you can see how overgrown it is. That's all thorny briars and stuff. It's pretty nasty up here. One point four miles into my hike, I'm up to uh, fourteen hundred and ninety feet. And uh, that's where I came from down that way. I'm at my waypoint for I number one, which is where the homestead was supposed to be from the old map. Now, <clears throat> the mountain, down there the mountain's not all that steep, but I'm getting into a section now that's pretty steep. So, and then up that way it's really steep. I'm gonna go up that way just a little ways and look around. But I really don't, I really don't see anything. I mean, I see roads. So I know there was people coming back this way, but I don't, I don't see any piles of rocks or anything like you would normally find. So I'm going to, I'm going to wander around a little bit and uh, I'm starting to get tired now. I'll wander around a little bit, see if I can find anything. If not, I'm going <clears> to <throat> start heading back down towards my car. It's hard for me to imagine somebody wanting to build a house up on a, a slope this steep, but let me go up here a little ways and just take a look. You know, plus or minus a couple of hundred feet. near this fry number one waypoint. I see plenty of uh, roads and things up through here, but I don't see I don't see any rock piles or anything. The last video I took I was over there on that on that little hill there. You can see it's pretty steep here. It's hard to, for me to imagine somebody building here but a little further down where I came from would make a lot more sense but then that's not close to the point on the map so I don't know I'm gonna do a 360 here and start heading back towards my car I even came over here on this adjacent little rise thinking maybe I'd see something over here but I, I don't see anything just wilderness So I got to get back down to my car, which is a couple miles <laughs> down that way. I think I'm going to follow the uh, the stream that I came up on. I think I'm going to follow it. I came up on the uh, east side. I think I'm going to go back on the west side because it didn't look as, as thorny. So I'll, I'll try that and see how that works. One point eight miles into my hike, the elevation here thirteen ten, and uh, I'm headed back to my car. I decided to uh, down there's a stream, and way back up there's where I came from. I crossed over the stream, so now I'm over on the west side. I hiked up on the east side, but I'm gonna go back on the west side, this side here, thinking that. Uh, it's not as much, not as many briars and thorns and stuff. So far, it looks a little bit better, although it's pretty steep. See how steep it is here? So anyway, I got to go, go around this hill here. And it's about three more tenths of a mile down to US 211. One point nine miles into my hike, the elevation here is twelve hundred and ninety feet, and uh, that's the way I'm headed. I'm still over here on the west side of the of the creek. Now, what's interesting is uh, 
there was no road shown on any map but look there's one there's one right here I'm standing in it and I'm just gonna follow it a little ways and see where I end up see that up that way <clears throat> and right over there it's armored up with a uh, stone and right here it's armored up with stone and there and on down that way and right there that stones the low side and there's there's the road so it looks like there was a road on both sides of the creek and actually up there I see some rock piles let's see see there's one up there pile of rocks I see a few more piles too so I'll make a, I'll mark this area with a waypoint there's definitely a road over here where there was still following this road out down towards route 211 I'm thinking this might take me to the uh, a waypoint I skipped it on the way up called pull in, pull in number one because it was too hard to get in there so this might go there and then out to 211 um, but this road is armored up on the on the high and the low side here's the high side and the reason I'm taking this video is I see more tear oh, let's call it terracing there's a level there there's a level there, that's a second level, a third level, a fourth level. I see four levels of terracing here, not counting this road. So, to take a look and see whose land this was, might be pulling. I climbed up the mountain just a little bit to get some better, closer pictures of this, what I'm calling terracing. Here's one section of it right here. And then there's another section right there. See that? And then there's another section above that. It'd be real interesting to try and figure out what was going on here. Something was going on here, that's for sure. And then the road is over here, heading down towards US 211. Two miles into my hike, I'm down to 1,260 feet. I left, I left the road back over there a little ways because it was getting real overgrown. And I'm headed towards uh, waypoint pulling number one, which is the one I skipped coming up. And I'm trying to find a way down the mountain that doesn't require me to grow a pair of wings. It looks like maybe I can get down this way. If not, I can go over here to the fold in the mountain, probably head on down. So anyway, we're going to head on down. Let's see, it's another... About two tenths of a mile down to that waypoint, and that waypoint's next to 211. Two point three miles into my hike, I'm almost down to uh, US 211. That's it down there. The elevation here is 1,120 feet. Uh, I'm approximately at waypoint pulling one, which was I skipped it coming over because it's super gnarly down that way. <clears throat> the exact point is over in this area where it's a little flatter. But uh, I stopped here because this must have been the approximate edge of his property because it starts down there at the road and this stack stone wall heads on up the mountain like that see that 
and right there it's it's taller than I am so you know six seven feet high I'll mark it with the GPS uh, coordinate Okay, well the stone wall and where I went into the woods is over that way. I just kind of worked my way over here until I found what looks like a pretty easy spot to get out, which is right here. So uh, you can tell from my GPS track where I left the woods and uh, I got to jump over a little drainage ditch here, but other than that, actually where I'm coming out, there, it looks like there's a little gravel pull off right over there on the other side. This is a map of today's hike. The quadrangle name is Thornton Gap 1994 and the purpose of the hike was to bushwhack up into this hollow here looking for some old uh, homesteads and a church and I decided I was going to hike up as far as this Emma J. Fry track which is historic track number 159. You park at the Buck Hollow trailhead Sperryville, Virginia is down here and this is US 211 coming up into the park. You come into the park and you park right here on the west side of 211 at the Buck Hollow Trailhead. So I park there, then I come up and hike back down 211 until I found this stream right here. <clears throat> There's an old map, Stony Man 1929, I'll show you that in a minute, that showed the stream and then a road and a church right there. I tried to, I, tr I found the stream and I tried to go in here where the church was supposed to be but it was so overgrown this area is so overgrown I really couldn't get in there so I came further down this way and went around like this and back this way until I finally did find the road uh, you can kind of see down here, but it's overgrown really bad, but I didn't see any stone, piles of stone or anything. There could be some, but I didn't, I didn't see any, and it was so thick down here with briars and stuff, I didn't want to try and get in there. So I started following this road up, and right up in here somewhere, I, I veered off to the right and found some rock piles. And then I continued to climb the mountain. When I got to here, there's a pretty good set of remains, uh, stone stonework from this homestead here. And then there was a driveway that headed off east on this side, and there was another homestead over here. Now, uh, I didn't bother trying to get to this one because this is another overgrown area. But I got some pictures of this one. And then took, took a left and headed in a northwest direction along the road until I finally got up here into this area of the Emma J. Fry track. I never did find any evidence of a, uh, of a house or anything up here, like stone piles or anything. And I wandered around all over the place. You'll see on my GPS track that I wandered around a lot up here looking for stuff, but I never could find anything. And once you get back up in here to a certain uh, distance, this mountain starts getting really steep. So then I crossed over the stream and decided to come back on the opposite side of the stream. When I got down into this area here, <clears throat> I, I didn't actually see any evidence of a, 
of an actual house or anything, but I did find an area that had a lot of terracing. Three or four levels worth of terracing above, above this road. There's a road on this side that's not even on the map. So I'm assuming the terracing is associated with this homestead here. Eventually I left the road because it became overgrown and just started bushwhacking looking for the easiest way back down to 211. When I got over to here I found this huge uh, stack stone wall. Got some pictures of that. Then I finally found a convenient spot to come out of the woods and then back to my car. Now this is the map from Stony Man 1929 and <clears throat> this is the this is the old road on the east side of the of the stream. There's the church. There's there's a homestead there. Another homestead here, a couple more here. And then that's the uh, the Fry homestead up there. And then I'll just show you one more from the Shenandoah National Park Historic Records. This little square here is the lot, the one acre lot the church was on. Here's a stream going up like this. And then I followed it on up into this area here. This track of land here was the was the Emma J. Fry track. And if you look at the attachments in the online database, there's a picture of a, a grave marker uh, for a fry that died in 1924. I thought when I get up here near the homestead location, maybe I could find that grave site, but I, I didn't find that either. Ended up being 2.4 miles and a total ascent of 630 feet. And that was the hike for today.